What's up guys, it's your boy Kidamaki. Today we're going to talk about Boruto chapter 52 and I have to say that this is hands down one of the best chapters in the entire Boruto series. Like hands down, all around, this chapter is just flipping amazing guys. Now we have to talk about Naruto's new form, this death mode basically. This dude is popping off all kind of shits like he's using Hawkeye from Dragon Ball Z. Or maybe he's just using some, some form of death jutsu guys. We don't know what it is but this power is just flipping amazing and we also have to talk about Kawaki like how did Ishiki bring him to the battlefield like we get more information on that in this chapter you know we talked about this in my spoiler review but a lot of people disagreed with it and said that it is kind of stupid but yeah this is this is what we got and we just have to work with it right so I'm going to explain that we're going to talk about that and we also have to talk about the awakening of Momoshiki or should we call him Boroshiki like this this chapter was just amazing and I and I, and I gotta say that next chapter might top this chapter because shits are about to go down so let's not waste any more time let's do it So first we start off with Naruto basically looking Ishiki dead in the eye and Kuruma basically explains to Naruto what this form is and how this form came about. So he says think of it like nuclear fusion. It's a similar principle to how the sun produces energy and Naruto is basically oblivious to what nuclear fusion is. He doesn't know what Kuruma is talking about and you know they're still playing off the dumb powerful character trope in shonen anime. And it's fine but it's kind of stupid seeing that Naruto is the Okage, he should know what nuclear fusion is, that's pretty basic for his, his um, title. So yeah, it's pretty stupid that he doesn't know what it is but you know it's fine, we can let it pass, let's move on. So Kurma then explains to Naruto that the form itself is pretty basic, it's just a merger of his and Naruto's chakra to create a new more powerful energy. So this is pretty simple and I think we talked about this in my Boruto spoiler review for chapter 52. So it's just a merge of their chakra and it just creates a more powerful form of energy as Kurma says. And it's pretty based in science because this, this is pretty basic science right with nuclear fusion. So this is pretty interesting that they're incorporating like legit science into the Naruto series and they've done that on multiple occasions but this is pretty interesting here. So then Naruto basically goes on to ask the question everyone wanted to ask. How is this different from Kurama mode and Sage of Six Paths mode? And this has been a point of contention in the, in the series since Boruto began. What happened to Naruto's Sage of Six Paths mode? So what we, I want to make a video separate on this, but I want to explain that Naruto's Sage of Six Paths mode in Boruto is completely different from Naruto's Sage of Six Paths mode in Naruto Shippuden at the end of the series. That Sage of Six Paths mode that Naruto had at the end of the series is way more powerful than the one he has now. Naruto has lost a lot of power. And there's a pretty basic um, explanation behind of it. I didn't know it at first. I basically read up about it a few weeks ago. So yeah, I really want to explain that to you guys. But I'm going to put that in a separate video to explain why Naruto doesn't have that Sage of Six Paths mode anymore. But let's continue with this chapter. So Korma explains that it's different, alright, like from the very root of it. So the other modes involve taking chakra that you acquire from elsewhere and just using it. But this form is different. This form is basically using chakra as raw materials to create this energy. My chakra and yours gets consumed until one or both of our lives run out. So this is pretty important for the chapters to come and you know we talked about this in my spoiler review as well and in a couple videos before this how will Naruto actually die? And you know we entertain the idea of maybe Kurma is the one that's going to die. So this basically just sowed a seed here for us to doubt that Naruto is actually going to die because it says either one or both of us. So it could be a case where both of them is going to die but one of them is going to die first. But it could also be a case where it just kills one of them. So this basically puts this into question, this entire theory of Naruto dying, right? So it could be a case where Kurama actually knows that he's the one that's going to die and he just basically confirmed with Naruto if, it, if it's okay for both of them to die. So he can basically just sacrifice himself to save Naruto. So that could be the case here and I'm going to make a video separately on this so we can actually discuss this mood and what it actually means and how and what will happen if Kurama actually dies because that's pretty important. So there's a huge downside to this form because Kurama basically says listen don't make any unnecessary moves 
those are the tricks to keep this Bayon mood or Baryon mood going for as long as possible. So Naruto can't really use any chakra based attacks, he can't really use any of his Bijudamas or anything like that because that would just run out this form quickly. So Naruto has to basically just resort to using Taijutsu which is just as effective and we learned something very important. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump the gun. I'm just gonna go with the flow and I'm gonna talk about it later on because this is this is just flipping OP guys. We need to talk about this but let's move on. So the strength of this form aside from the downside from this form where Naruto can't really use his attacks his strength is his power has increased tenfold like a thousand fold because this dude is basically just dodging all of Ishiki's attack it's like this dude is in ultra instinct or something this is some ultra instinct level shit that's going on in this chapter Naruto is basically dodging all of Ishiki's attacks Ishiki cannot land a single hit on Naruto Ishiki also resorted to using his eye to create the cubes or to bring the cubes into this dimension and try to drop them on Naruto and Naruto just caught all of them effortlessly effortlessly with his tails and you can see the force that these cubes came down with because just the shock wave from Naruto catching them blew everyone away including Naruto um, I mean Sasuke and Boruto so that shows you how strong this dude is and then he just hurled one of them at Ishiki and Ishiki had to dodge it this dude is OP just imagine right just imagine if he's dodging all of Ishiki's attack in this form right just imagine if he stacks sage mood upon this form this dude is OP flipping OP and just imagine him stacking six paths mode on this form like this dude is just in on another level this is some god level shit here one amazing feat that Naruto pulled off in this chapter is where he basically grab Ishiki's rod so Ishiki fired these rods, rods at Naruto and basically what we know of these rods from the previous fight that they had they're super fast like they couldn't even dodge them earlier right even with sage mode and six paths mode and Sasuke with his renegon and so on they kept getting pierced by these rods but Naruto was able to grab all three of them effortlessly and even Sasuke had to look on like wow I can't even keep up with my Sharengan but Naruto is able to grab them so effortlessly right so Sasuke himself is seeing that Naruto is on a different level right now but as expected Naruto started to feel the side effects of using this form where his chakra is starting to run out his life force is basically starting to run out and even Sasuke noticed this with his Sharingan because he can see that Naruto's chakra is dropping drastically and he says this to himself and even Boruto, Boruto is just there watching right but because of all the damage he incurred and even the shockwave from before right he just went to sleep right he just he's just completely out of it he said that he can't even stay awake you know so this is pretty interesting it leads into something that happens later on and it ties back into something that happened in Boruto's fight so I want to talk about that but let's not jump the gun let's continue with where we're at right now so as Naruto's life force starts to get lower and lower it starts to show on his body like he's getting slower and his chakra level is going down physically and Ishiki can notice this and he basically just figured everything out on the spot. He just said that that rapid jump in your abilities and power was a life shortening sacrificial gamble and that's exactly what it was and he deduced that by just looking at Naruto. So this is pretty interesting and it shows that Ishiki is pretty smart, he's not this one dimensional villain right? But a funny thing happened just as Ishiki was starting to gloat and feel like he's going to win this battle, he started to notice that he's spitting up blood and he's like fuck this is impossible I haven't taken such a lethal amount of damage. And Naruto is just basically laughing at this point because he knows exactly what's happening to Ishiki. Then we cut to a panel of Kuruma talking to Naruto and he basically explains to Naruto that this power is immense, it should definitely exceed Ishiki. So we got official confirmation for all the naysayers out there that this form that Naruto has is officially confirmed to be stronger than Ishiki. And that's, I have to say, hats off to Kodashi or whoever wrote this, right? We don't know if, if Kishimoto came in before this was written or afterwards, right? But guys, I have to say, hats off. Like, even if Naruto dies, which I highly doubt is gonna happen, we have to say that he went out with a fight and he went out with the strongest form in the series. Because this form, bro, this form is amazing. Like, this dude is able to take on Ishiki 
without any trouble. And we have to, it, this is similar to Mastered Ultra Instinct, um, Goku versus Jiren. Because basically what we saw in that fight is that Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku is stronger than Jiren, right? He fought each Jiren and he beat Jiren in the last half of the tournament. But what happened is that the form itself backfired on Goku and that's what caused Jiren to almost win that battle, right? So when we're going to put up Jiren and Goku together, we're going to put them up in their highest form, which is Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku and Jiren in his highest form. And if we do that, Goku is going to win. Without the drawbacks of the form that keep backfiring on Goku and basically crippling him on the ground, Goku would have won that fight hands down. So it's a similar situation here where Naruto has the power to take down Jigen or Ishiki, whatever you want to call him. But he can't do it because the form is basically backfiring on his body so it's not complete. So if we see like Naruto actually survives this and gets to complete this form and to use this form without this drawback of him dying, that this dude is just unbeatable. Like this is just some god level shit here guys. I just want to say it. this might be me just um, hyping him to, a, to an extreme but Basically what I'm looking at here and based on what I'm seeing, Naruto is in a god level form right now. I don't think anyone on Naruto's planet can really test Naruto. Not Sasuke, not Ishiki. And something else I want to talk about that just puts this form above anything else is what Kurma says next. Like Kurma basically says that each time Naruto punches Ishiki, he also shortens the life force within Ishiki himself. Like this is just something unbelievable. So it's not as if Naruto is just punching him and he's just dying like he's just losing life like normally when you punch someone with a heavy punch, right? No, he's literally siphoning the life force from Ishiki's body. Like this puts this form on some God of Death level shit here. Like if this dude has the power to just siphon off your life force by just being on, in contact with your body, this dude is fucking OP guys, I just have to say it. Like you put this dude upon, uh, like on a battlefield with anybody with a life force, you're telling me that as long as you come in contact with this dude, your life force is getting siphoned? That's some fucked up shit. Like this is, maybe this is too OP or maybe I'm reading into this too much but based on what I see here and based on what Kurma said, like this form and this power is some god level shit. God level shit guys. So Naruto knowing this is just going after Ishiki and giving it to him, right? And Ishiki starts to realize that it's not just the punches that's hurting him, it's this power itself, it's draining his life force. So Ishiki starts to realize that his life force dropped from 20 hours to just under 30 minutes. And Naruto just kept hammering him into the ground and he's just at this point where his life force is now under 10 minutes so he's just panicking right now Ishiki is angry you can see it on his face he's noticeably angry and panicking right and he's surprised because this power came out of nowhere but Naruto's power eventually started to fade and Ishiki got the drop and Naruto and slammed him into the ground and had his hands at Naruto's neck like and he's just upset and then something clicked like basically he has his hand around Naruto's neck and he's basically feeling Naruto's chakra and somehow he detects that Naruto's chakra is connected to Kawaki's and he deduces that by basically remembering that Kawaki had this arm on his body and he's like oh so that's how that arm is connected to Kawaki and he uses this link between Naruto and Kawaki to basically teleport Kawaki into the battlefield. Like everyone that's around Kawaki right now they're like talking about the link between Naruto and Kawaki because Hamado didn't know about this and he's like Naruto is that generous huh and then out of nowhere Kawaki just teleports out of the place onto the battlefield and everyone is noticeably surprised because anyone would be even Amado so this theory about Amado basically working for Ishiki in the background and he's basically double crossing Naruto this kind of gets thrown out because even Amado didn't see this coming and he's noticeably surprised so this is some really good shit in this chapter bro and even Naruto on the battlefield and Sasuke are like shit this is gonna get fucked up soon. And something happened that we need to talk about something really important and I talked about this in my uh, chapter review the, the spoiler review and it's Boruto basically awakening and you know we have to talk about what this really means. 
So what we saw was just Boruto's eye opening and in the spoiler review it said that it's the Jogan so we have to assume that it's the Jogan. The thing with the Jogan is that we can't really tell the difference between the Jogan and the Byakugan in the manga panels because they don't show it properly. So it looks similar to the Byakugan right? So when Boroshiki basically comes forth and when you say Boroshiki we're talking about the fusion between Boruto and Momoshiki. When Momoshiki basically comes forth, now Boruto's eye turns into the Byakugan, right? So we don't know if it's if, if this is the Jogan or if it's the Byakugan. But based on the, the spoiler review and the uh, synopsis we got for the chapter, we can say that it's the Jogan. But what I have to say is that this is also definitely Momoshiki. So this is Momoshiki used in the Jogan. The reason why I say this is because look on this dude's face. This is not Boruto. This dude is too serious to be Boruto. If this was Boruto, he would be like crying or frightened because Naruto is on the ground. This is Momoshiki. This dude is just pissed off. And Momoshiki is about to go off guys. Trust me. This is going to be a beautiful chapter. I'm talking about chapter 53. Like we're gonna see in Boroshiki versus Ishiki. It might be unfair because Ishiki is like at the brink of death. But who cares right? This dude was stated to be more powerful so fuck off, who cares? And another thing I want to talk about that points in the direction of this being Momoshiki is the fight between Boro and the Team 7. So what happened is that Boruto got knocked out and when he woke up he was Momoshiki. So it's similar to what happened here where Boruto went to sleep and he suddenly has this eye out of nowhere right? This could definitely mean that when Boruto is in a battle and he gets knocked out, similar to what happens to Naruto uh, when he gets knocked out in a fight, he transforms into the Ninetales, that could be the case for Boruto with Momoshiki as well. So that basically kinda confirms that this is Momoshiki, it's not a fact but this could definitely be Momoshiki using the Jogan. And if this is Momoshiki right, this is Momoshiki that has all of these hacks abilities already, the Rena Sharingan right, using the Jogan as well. This is just fucked up that like, this is just some fucked up shit here boruto is overpowered guys overpowered and we might see boruto surpass naruto in the next chapter who knows right maybe not naruto's current form that he's using right now because that was able to take on ishiki but maybe naruto's all of naruto's forms before this because this form here that naruto is using is just god level shit here guys so that's basically all that happened in this chapter but this chapter was pretty eventful it had a lot of fight scenes compared to the other chapters which was pretty good I always want to see fight scenes and Kodashi Ikimoto has gotten way better with how he structures his fight scenes and that is brilliant I have to say hats off to him and I have to say hats off to Kodashi if he wrote this chapter right if he wrote the prior chapters like the last five chapters hats off to him because he's really letting naruto shine before he kills him right <laughs> if he, that's if he even dies but if they are planning to kill him like they're really allowing naruto to shine and i think the naruto fans will generally be happy with this i'm happy with this so yeah just let me know what you guys thought about this in the comment section i might separate this video up to basically talk about individual theories in other videos but this is just a, this is just a chapter review itself in one so let me know what you guys thought about the video itself if if you enjoyed the video please remember to hit the like button and if you're new to the channel please remember to hit the subscribe button and also remember to hit that notification bell to be notified of all my future content as I will be uploading more Boruto and My Academia videos. So until next time guys, stay safe.